In this video, we're gonna show you how to build this little creative shot from the ground up. My name is Pai, and I'm one of the founders of Lynn and Jersa Photography and slrlounge.com. We're teaming up with Adorama to bring you a new series of photography tutorials called Master Your Craft right here on Adorama TV. So let's dive in. What's up guys? We are here at Laguna Beach. This is my friend Taylor. You can follow her at Tay Livingston on Instagram. Now we're gonna build a shot from the ground up. I have a 1DX Mark III, namely because I'm just playing with it, having fun. You guys don't need a $7,000 camera to do this. All you really need is just a prime lens of your choosing. I like the Sigma Art Series as well as just really any camera. So here's the deal. I'm gonna take my basic shot. I wanna go with a center composition, a shot with kind of all these clouds in the background, and we're gonna build into the final image that you saw just a moment ago. So for my composition, I'm thinking something like this, and we're gonna keep Taylor's sweater on because I think it kind of looks kind of fun and whimsical. And at about, one two thousand of a second f 1.4 and iso 100 we get a really great shot taylor looks fantastic the background looks great but what we're going to do is just add a little more interest into it so step two this is a fun little kind of creative foreground element that i made and i'm going to show you guys how to do this kind of stuff in a separate video but really all it is is beads that i would get at a craft store wrapped around a ring you guys can use anything for this. It could be a plastic bottle, it could be this, it could be a bronze tube, anything to get this exact same effect. But you'll notice when I hold this over and I bring this kind of right over Taylor right there and I take my shot, well, we kind of lose a little bit of the, of the ring. Like we don't really see that much of it. And that's because the sun has already set. So what I'm gonna do is actually place a flash where the sun would be and we're gonna create our own flare and kind of our own sunlight and sort of mimic it. So this is all you need. Grab whatever flash you got. I'm using here the Profoto A1X and it has a MagMod Mag Grip on it. All I'm gonna do is pop a CTO on top of this. I also like to keep a grid handy just in case I wanna prevent light spill. I can pop this on. If you end up not getting enough light, take it off. But this is really all we need and I'm gonna go ahead and put this onto a Manfrotto Nano Stand. Now, I'll probably have Taylor kind of, we'll probably work closer to the water just to make sure we don't get people in our backgrounds. So really what I wanna do is place it in a position where it looks like the sun in the background, right? So I'm gonna kind of place it where the sun would be on the horizon. So we're just gonna go back here a little bit. It's still fairly bright out, so I'm gonna go ahead and keep this at full power. This is a 75 watt second flash, so a bit more powerful than a standard flash head. And I'm just gonna raise it so it looks like from my angle and position, it's kind of coming directly from where the sunlight would be. All right, so you'll notice that I actually have Taylor very close to the flash, and that's because we don't have a ton of power, right? I'm also using high-speed sync. I'm at 1/1000th right now, f1.4 and low ISO. So the flash is just not that powerful. So this is the actual shot. You can see that there's just not that much light coming through. It's enough though to kick a little bit of light onto this object. So what I'm gonna do is place this now directly over the lens, and you'll see now that there's light coming through that it actually lights up. Whereas before, it was kind of that dark little object in front of the lens, right? So we need some light hitting it directly. The only thing is I don't want that light to be kind of noticeable in the frame with the stand. So what we're gonna do now is adjust our angle. So Taylor's just gonna go this way. I'm gonna hold this directly over my lens. Taylor, I love what you're doing with the hands, kind of bringing it up. Let's go ahead and uh, clean up the flyaways too. There you go. And step just a little bit more, right there, right there, right there. Perfect. So all I'm gonna do now is probably adjust my, uh, my shutter speed just a little bit to get a little more brightness into the background. It'll also help our high-speed sync to keep up a little bit better. Now, I love using a 24 to a 50 millimeter for this technique, and there's two things you can use to control the effect. One is bringing the actual object closer to the lens versus a little bit further from the lens, and notice I'm holding it from the top so I don't get my fingers in the frame. The other is just by controlling the shape and the actual size by dialing down the aperture. So when you're shooting wide, the shape is gonna be more exaggerated, the blur's gonna be more exaggerated. As you close down, it's gonna shrink down.
We hope you all enjoyed this technique. Take it, go out, have fun, play. As always, leave comments below, tell us what you guys think. You guys can follow Taylor at Tay Livingston on Instagram. You can follow me at Pi Jersa. And again, for more of the best A to Z education on photography, business, lighting, everything, check out srloungeworkshops.com and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.